Light exposure. I'm going to tell you about the fastest known, fastest known antidepressant response that you can get this side of ketamine, which is, um, we're not going to talk about a whole lot. <laughs> Anybody, how many of you saw the news last year about ketamine, um, which is a street drug that when they, they injected intravenously to a point where they basically had surgical anesthesia with depressed individuals, they could get, for some of them, an antidepressant response within 24 hours? I don't recommend it, by the way. <laughs> um, so assuming, you know, we're not going that route, light therapy is profoundly antidepressant. And when somebody takes a medication, like uh, what are some of the best sellers right now? Effexor, Lexapro, uh, Cymbalta. You guys could tell me lots of others. Wellbutrin. Thank you very much. Wellbutrin. I mean, we could you know, have a list of about 15. When you take a, an antidepressant medication, you're typically told, if you're told accurately, well, this will take three to six weeks to kick in, right? Bright light therapy, when it has an effect, typically has an effect that's discernible initially within five to seven days. Five to seven days. This is particularly interesting and important this time of the year. Why? Because one out of three Americans experience at least some symptoms of depression during the cold, cloudy, dark, gloomy days of winter. One out of three Americans experience at least some clinically significant symptoms of depression. Why? What is it about light what is it about bright light in particular that affects our ability to function, that affects our mood, that affects our energy? Well, before we answer that question, I need to, to point out something that you may not have known, which is if you look at this light meter here, this is, by the way, the units are lux, L-U-X, what you'll see is that indoor light ranges down on this end of the continuum, and outdoor light, especially on a clear sunny day, is on this side. Let me put it to you in the simplest possible terms. As bright as it is in here with these floodlights, if, if I were to step outside on a sunny afternoon, it would be 100 to 1,000 times brighter. Indoor lighting at its brightest is no match for outdoor lighting. And get this, our ancestors for hundreds of thousands of years were outdoors all the time. Their brains were wired with the expectation that their eyes are going to be getting very bright light from sunup to sundown. Now, this gets really interesting. Why? Because your body clock is not very accurate. Your body clock is not a Rolex. It's not even a Timex. It's like, you know, a Timex that's been left outside for a couple months. And, you know, the body clock on average is off by about an hour a day. If, you, if you're like left in a cave somewhere where you have no external cues, your body clock starts to drift by an hour, sometimes two hours, every 24 hour period. You cannot keep your biological rhythms in sync without what? A daily dose of bright light. How big a dose? Circadian cue, ah, come back. Circadian cue, 2,500 lux. The brightest indoor light, 500 lux. In other words, at least five times brighter than anything you're going to get inside. What does that mean? Get outside, yeah. During the short, cold, cloudy days of winter, many Americans do not get their body clock reset. What does that mean? Their circadian rhythms start to drift. Their sleep starts to suffer. Their hormonal levels are out of balance. Their energy starts to sag. Their appetite starts to go crazy. They start craving carbs. They start wanting to hibernate. But wait, it gets better. You have specialized light receptors in the back of your eye. Do you remember the part of the eye called the retina? When you were back in school and you learned the retina has two kinds of light receptors, rods and cones, right? Remember? Rods for light and dark and cones for color. They lied. You have a third type just for the brightness of light. And those light receptors have a broadband connection right to the center of the brain where your body clock is, but it gets even better. Also to circuits that regulate your energy level that use dopamine, that have special connection to the reward circuits in the brain, and other circuits that use serotonin. Bright light changes brain function. It changes neurochemistry. Somewhere between 70 and 80% of the population report they get an immediate mood elevating effect when it goes from being very gloomy and cloudy to being very sunny 
or when they go from a dark indoor space to going out on a bright. How many of you, by the way, just out of show of hands, like if it's been cloudy and gloomy for several days and the sun breaks through, you just notice an immediate boost in your mood and energy level. Yeah, yeah, most of us, most of us here. We need bright light. We need it every day. It is antidepressant. It has been tested head to head. Now this is what really shocked the heck out of me. Not only has it been t tested head to head against medication for the treatment of seasonal winter onset depression, it's been tested head to head against antidepressant for non-winter onset, run of the mill depression. And it works, and it works. It's antidepressant. What kind of dose does it take? 30 minutes of bright light for most of us in the morning. For most of us within one hour of waking up. How bright is bright? 10,000 lux. That means outside on at least a partly sunny day. In other words, maybe cloudy, but you can see clear sky. Or an artificial light box. You can now buy an artificial light box like this for less than $100. Go on Amazon, look for 10,000 lux light box or several. Yes? Oh, excellent, excellent, excellent question. There's one other benefit from natural sunlight. So we covered the, the bright light. So in the wintertime, of course, uh, you know, the holiday season is quickly upon us. Some of you might like, um, a, as a gift, a uh, airline ticket to someplace warm and sunny. <laughs> you now have a wonderful rationale to give such a gift or to receive such a gift. Because if you happen to live in Kansas in the middle of winter, your options for getting the antidepressant dose of bright light each day are probably either buy a light box or take a trip someplace sunny and warm. So I would opt for Hawaii or Acapulco or something. Yes? Okay. What about my glasses? Do they affect the... Oh, excellent question. Sunglasses do. Regular glasses do not. If you're in your car, as long as you don't have tinted... With ultraviolet? Uh, yeah, we don't need ultraviolet. We need ultraviolet light for vitamin D, which I'll talk about in just a second. Um, if you're in your car commuting when it's sunny out, any of you have that? Um, you actually still get 50% of the, the uh, luminance or intensity of light, so you're okay if you in your car. If you don't wear sunglasses, at least for those 30 minutes. Now, if you want to prevent the onset, if you're not depressed right now, but you want to prevent the onset of depression, it only takes 15 minutes first thing in the morning. Oh, let me say two other things quickly and then I'll talk about the vitamin D angle. Number one, if you have bipolar depression, you know, bipolar, where, you know, where there's mania on top of the depression at different times, if you have bipolar depression, it is dangerous to get bright light exposure first thing in the morning. Research studies have found that many individuals, about half who have bipolar depression, actually flip over into a very dangerous episode of mania or what we call a mixed state, where they have mania and depression simultaneously, where they're suicidal and have lots of energy and impulsivity. That's not a good combination. Um, so if you're bipolar and depressed, you can still benefit from bright light. The best research evidence suggests that it's safest at midday. Midday, not first thing in the morning. Yes? I was just wondering, is there a certain time when you're Within one hour of within one hour of awakening, within one the no only exception. No matter what time you get up, within one hour of now the only exception to this is if you have what we refer to as terminal insomnia, where your body clock has been shifted in such a way that you go to sleep really really easily and you start to get drowsy super early and then you wake up like three in the morning and you can't go back to sleep or you wake up at four in the morning and you don't want to be awake until six or six thirty. Anybody here have that? If you have that, you want to get your bright light exposure about four hours before your target bedtime, and that'll help push your body clock in the right direction. And this is very powerful. My wife had somebody that she worked with who for 10 years had been waking up at between 2.30 and 3 in the morning for 10 years. She tried multiple meds. She tried everything. Nothing helped. I said, honey, we need to give her our, our we have our own light box at home. Let's give her our light box. We're not using it right now. And I, I sent her with, like, you know, just handwritten instructions. And a month later, she calls, and she's like, this is a miracle. It's changed my freaking life. 
Um, I just slept until 7 a.m. for the first time. And like, it's powerful. It's powerful, powerful stuff. Now, vitamin D is another benefit we get from being outside. W remember, we're designed to be outside all the time. What is vitamin D? It's not a vitamin. It's a hormone, right? Why do I call it a hormone? Not a vi Vitamins are nutrients that you have to get from your diet. Hormones are things your body can make. Your body can make all the vitamin D it needs. It just needs a little assist from the sun. Ultraviolet rays hitting your skin. You know what, it, what the building block is? You know what vitamin D is made out of? Cholesterol. <laughs> cholesterol. Yes, your cholesterol level will go down if you have sun exposure in the summertime and you're making vitamin D. Now, the average American is deficient in vitamin D over the winter. In fact, many Americans are deficient in the summertime as well because they love their dermatologist and the dermatologist says slather yourself with SPF 5000, you know, all the time. And um, by the way, as we age, as we get older, we lose our efficiency in making vitamin D. So older Americans are more likely to be deficient than younger Americans. What can you do? Well, vitamin D is anti-inflammatory. Huh. If it's anti-inflammatory, then it's probably antidepressant. Yes. The evidence suggests that it probably is because vitamin D deficiency is a big risk factor for depression. So I would suggest, as we do with the patients in our protocol, that you also consider talking with your doctor about supplementing with vitamin D as well. Great, great question. All right.